This is Jeff Badger, the grinding doc. Uh, we're here at IMTS in the afternoon. Things are winding down. And I'm um, here with Joe Quimby, and we're chatting about grinding. And Joe's got an issue going on with his grinding operation, so we're going to have a little chat about that. See if we can figure out what's going on. So what's going on, Joe? So we're grinding with a Norton SG wheel. Okay. Okay. And um, what we're finding, I, I can't figure out what's going on. We dress about every six parts because on the seventh part, sometimes the eighth part, but it's usually the seventh part, we lose form. Okay. Okay. So I said, well, we should put a power meter on the machine to see if we can understand what might be going on. So when you lose form, is it kind of gradually and then after eight it's out of the out of, out of tolerance or does it happen quickly? Or it happens it's quickly. No, everything stays nice and tight and then quickly it just so everything goes, goes okay way and boom, boom, everything goes to hell on the eighth yeah. part. Okay. Goes, yes, correct. Okay. So what the power meter tells me is when I, right after a dress, yeah. I'm at about one horsepower. Sorry. Two horsepower. Two horsepower. My bad. Okay. So we're about two horse, and it slowly goes up without dressing again um, to the sixth part, and all those parts are good. They're in form. They're great. And then on the seventh part, when I lose form, the horsepower drops down to about two and without dressing. So he went up to around three, three, three-ish. Yeah. And then he dropped down. This is when you don't dress. When so I don't dress. If you don't dress, he's going up, and then he drops. Right. Even though you don't dress. Correct. Okay. So therefore you're dressed in every, how many parts? Five-ish. Five, just to kind of prevent that from yeah. happening. Yeah. Okay. So if I got this right then, let's plot your power signal. We'll do one horsepower, two horsepower, three horsepower. Yeah. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you start off around two. Power gradually goes up. We haven't dressed. Power goes up. We haven't dressed. Power goes up. And all of a sudden, seven or eight, it right. drops down. No dressing. He didn't drop because of dressing. He just dropped on his own. Right. And if we look at form, we're doing okay for form. Nothing, not too bad, and then somewhere around here, boom. Terrible. Just kind of loose form. Yes. Okay. So therefore you dress. Now when you dress, I would imagine, since you're dressing every four, you're getting the same thing going on. Yeah. But when you dress, it comes back down. Right. So then you get kind of this sawtooth effect. Correct. And then wheel wear is okay, but none of that catastrophic stuff that's going on. Right. Over here. That's right. Okay. I think I got a handle of what's going on. Okay. Um... First, the, uh, the SG grit, Norton SG grit, has a fine microstructure. So it doesn't have just a few big crystals, it's got billions and billions of little crystals. And if you use them right, these little guys just kind of pluck out at the top, so we maintain a sharp wheel. Okay. But because of the fine microstructure, the guy is really tough. So you got to hit this guy hard to get him to fracture. So if you hit him hard, boom, we can get a little piece of need to bust out but okay. if we don't hit them hard enough the guy just becomes duller and duller and duller so that's the thing with the uh, ceramic grid and especially with Norton SG you got to push it hard they say or you've got to have a big chip load or a big grip penetration depth or you got to really dig deep to get a big enough force to get that guy to, to fracture otherwise he's just gonna dull okay, okay? yeah so so what do I got to do now let's take a look at what's going on with the uh, wheel wear. If you have a nice, normal, well-functioning wheel, you got all these grits in here, you got the bond material, and if things are going well, this guy's becoming dull because that's inevitable and the grits are going to become dull. But what happens is this guy becomes dull, power goes up a little bit, but before he becomes too dull, the grit will fracture. Or before he becomes too dull, the grit will pop out of the bond. Or in the case of the Norton SG, he'll fracture, but just in little bits and pieces. He'll micro-fracture. Okay. Okay, so things are okay. Power goes up a little bit, but because these guys are busting out for the bond material, cracking, whatever, wheel wear is just kind of steady, and we still kind of self-sharpen our wheel. Mm -hmm. That's if we're doing it right. If we're not doing it right, here's what happens. 
get the same wheel, let's say we dress them the same way, same grits. But let's say we grind timidly or wimpy and we don't have a big grit penetration depth or a chip load or aggressiveness or whatever you want to call it. So the grit comes and instead of digging in real deep and maybe busting out, the grit just sort of tickles the surface. Okay. That happens when your wheel speed is high, it happens when your feed rate is slow, it happens when your depth of cut is kind of shallow, depending on the grinding operation, different parameters, but whatever it is, we're just not digging deep enough to get that guy to fracture. So what happens is it becomes dull, just like you did in the other case, but it becomes dull, but the forces aren't big enough to get that guy to bust, especially with Norton SG, because we got to have bigger forces. Forces aren't big enough to get them to pop out of the bond material. So he just becomes duller and duller and duller. Now we really don't get much real wear because the guys aren't gut busting out, but we're getting just dulling and dulling and dulling. Okay? Then something kind of funky happens. And no one quite has a handle on this 100%. But in the last five or six years, we've sort of figured out what's going on. And what happens when these guys become dull is the tangential force gets bigger, but the normal force pushing on these guys gets really big. Okay. But the normal force isn't real conducive to getting that guy to pop out. It just kind of pushes him back in. It's not real good for conducive to getting that guy to fracture. Makes sense. So these guys just become duller and duller and duller. Forces get big, and it'd be nice if these guys would pluck out one by one, but they don't. So what happens is power's going up, Power's going up, our wheel's becoming dull, and then all of a sudden we lose a whole layer of grits. So instead of a guy here, a guy here, a guy here, we lose a whole bunch. And we lose a whole bunch, you lose form. Our wheel's kind of sharp again because now we got all these grits down here who are sharp, but we've kind of chewed up our wheel. And people call this collapse of the wheel. Okay, okay. so we sort of collapse it. So okay. the wheel, instead of just kind of wearing away nice and steady, he doesn't wear away at all, and then all of a sudden, we lose big chunks around the perimeter. Okay. Maybe we get chatter marks, um, power goes down, that's all fine and good, but we don't really have a good, nice, healthy, happy wheel. Okay? The biggest cause of this is we're not grinding aggressively enough. We got to get those guys to dig in deep. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Got to get those guys to self-sharpen. So how do we get those guys to dig in deeper? Well, let's say we're doing surface grinding. Let's say we're doing up grinding. A couple ways we can get those grits, when they dig in, to really dig in deep. You probably know what this is. If we wanted to get those guys to dig in, what would we do with the wheel speed? Get them to dig in deeper? Decrease it. Slow down the wheel. That's one way to do it. Yeah. Second way to do it with your feed rate would be to get them to dig deeper. We want to push the wheel hard. So you're going to speed it up. Yep. Yeah. We've got a faster feed rate. Okay. Or we can even take a deeper depth of cut. Any yeah. of those will do the job. Uh, probably not all at once because then it might be overkill. But do those incrementally. And maybe slow down the wheel speed or increase the feed rate of the two that I like to get those grits to self-sharpen a little bit better. Cylindrical grinding, let's say we're doing cylindrical plunge, a little bit different, but ways you can do that is slow down the wheel speed, plunge faster, get those guys to dig in deeper, or speed up your workpiece RPM. That one's not quite as well known, but that'll also okay. get those guys to dig in deeper. So what we want when you measure power, you do that, Start off with the same two horsepower. If we increase the feed rate, it's going to be a little bit bigger, obviously. But if we do things right, we'll start off at two. Part one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll probably get something that looks <coughs> Excuse me. like that. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to go to part 30 before the wheel finally collapse. collapses instead of part six. And wheel wear, instead of being nothing and then all at once, will be nice and steady. You can actually get a little bit more wheel wear, but you're not going to get that collapse effect until way, way over there. Okay. Make sense? It does make sense. Good. Thank you. Thank you.